Welcome back friends. In this video, we'll look at an enhancement of the Hangman game where we'll provide a virtual keyboard for our user for the user to be able to enter the letters that they want. So the idea is that you will get this bunch of keys where you know uh, the user can just click uh, whichever letter they want instead of the answer box that we had earlier, right? Now, uh, we are going to do this in three steps. The first step will be to create, let's say, uh, you know, uh, this sprite itself. Next step is to create this uh, this layout of keyboard and the third step will be to modify the code right so let's see this one by one for creating the sprites you know it's really not that hard but it's a little bit like you know time taking what i've done is that i've taken you know uh, created a new sprite where i have created all these costumes as the keys right so notice here i've got a b uh, c d all the way until z so i've got 26 keys and just like the letters, uh, you know, uh, the letters right earlier in the original game, I have made sure that the names of the costumes are matching to the keys. So small a is called small a, small b is called, for example, small b and so on, right? So in fact, if you, you know, if you notice carefully, what re I really did was to duplicate this letter sprite and remove all the code. Uh, you know, and then basically retain only these half of costumes, right? So I had all the other costumes which I removed, right? Because I just want the letters to be uh, displayed here, right? So you can imagine I've got 26 costumes. So that's how I get, uh, you know, this letter costumes. Now over to the code. Like I said, we're going to do it in two parts. Uh, you know, the code itself, we're going to do it in two parts. The first part will be to create the layout, right? Now this layout is really not very hard if you think about it because uh, we have done this before. We have seen how we can place sprites in a grid. Uh, in fact, this particular grid is just of uh, a grid of two rows and 13 columns, right? So we can just use cloning for this purpose. Uh, we have done this many, many times before, for example, in the, you know, in the Brick Breaker game and so on. So we are just going to do exactly that, right? So I'm just going to create a layout where uh, this, uh, you know, this keyboard gets, uh, let's say, placed over there. All right, so... Uh, I'm just going to start writing some code. So first thing first, I'm going to define a few variables over here. Specifically, I'll define number of rows and number of columns, right? So in this case, I'm just going to say make a variable, let's say n rows. Now you can actually make it for this sprite only because it's only used for this particular sprite. But for now, it's okay. We can leave it for uh, you know all sprites like we have been doing. Um, also, I'm going to make let's say a variable called n columns, right? Uh, n columns. Okay? Now. When the flag is clicked, I want this sprite to hide because the clones will take over. So I'll say when the flag is clicked, you know, uh, notice I'm in the letters input sprite. So I'll say when the flag is clicked, hide. And also I'll set these two variables, right? So I'll go and set, let's say, uh, set n columns and n rows to. Uh, so there you go here. So I'll say set, let's say, uh, n rows to 2 because I want two rows. And I'm going to set n columns to 13 because I need 13 columns, right? So I'll say set n rows to 2 and n rows to 13. And thereafter is a standard, you know, um, repeat loop, uh, nested loop that we have done before. But before that, I'll make this sprite go to a particular position. So say, let's say I'll say make it go to something like, you know, at the bottom of the screen. So let's say something like minus 120 and minus 130. Uh, sorry, minus 210 and minus 130. And like I said, there after that straightforward code. So I'm just going to repeat this inside a repeat, repeat inside a repeat. We have seen this before. So, uh, you know, the idea would be to just basically use uh, the two nested loops, well, actually a nested loop to uh, create this whole effect, right? So I'll say first one, outer one should be repeat and n uh, rows. So repeat n rows and repeat n columns. And here, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to create a clone of myself. So create clone of myself. And I will, you know, change x by say, uh, let's say 35. Right? So I'll say change x by say 35. So this creates me one row. Uh, and also I must repeat this multiple times. So I'm just going to say set x to say minus 210 and change y this time round. So I'll say set x to say minus 210 and then change uh, y by let's say uh, in this case I'll try say minus 35. Now and all these numbers are basically related to the size of my costumes and so on. And of course I must tell what happens when these clones are created. So I'll go and say uh, when I start as a clone then show. 
but there's one more thing I must do. Let me just do this much first. So, so when I start as a clone, then show. Uh, but notice that I want this, you know, costumes to start in a way the clones to take on different costumes, right? So I'll start with the costume of A, and I'll keep changing the costume after every clone is formed, right? So what I'll do here is that when I, you know, when the code starts, I'll say switch costume to A because A remember is the first costume. So here I'll say switch costume to, uh, you know. A and then after creation of the clone, I'll just say next costume, right? So this I think should do the job for me. Uh, let's just see if this thing works. Notice that what's going on here. So I get this keyboard. Of course, it's you can see that's kind of obscured here because of this answer box, right? But the keyboard is actually forming, right? Uh, so if I just go and modify, start modifying, let's say this. If I just remove, say, this part of the answer box, I'll, I'll go and say I'll remove, let's say, this whole logic for now. Right. Uh, what will happen is that when I go here and click this, notice I get this nice looking keyboard uh, created for me with all the keys as they are. Right. Uh, but, you know, if I want to, I can just do a little bit of a modification here that, you know, this takes a while to form. What I can do is that I can put this entire code inside a my block, right, which means that starting from, let's say, uh, you know, starting from I can set these variables, right? I can set these two variables and I can, you know, move this whole thing here. Uh, let's say this entire code I can put inside a my block. So I'll what I'll do is that I'll create a my block called, let's say, you know, make a block called, say, create keyboard, right? Create keyboard. And you'll see the benefit of doing this. So I'll say create keyboard. Now inside this define create keyboard, I'll just say this. And over here, I'll call this create keyboard to do, you know, exactly what I was doing. Notice this code should behave exactly the same. Now you might wonder why did I do this? Because in this create keyboard, I can go and edit and I can say run without screen refresh, right? Now what that does is that the keyboard basically appears almost instantaneously, right? So notice the keyboard just appears now because this particular my block now runs without screen refresh. All right, so now moving on to the code, right? So obviously we have to modify this because previously all the decision and entry input is happening from this sprite, which is now going to happen from the letters input sprite, right? So what we are going to do is that we'll, you know, once this grid is formed, I will <coughs> issue a broadcast called, let's say, uh, you know, I'll, I'll issue a broadcast called, let's say the grid ready. It's just like saying that, you know, the letters were ready. So I think I already should have this broadcast over here. So I'll say, uh, no, so I'll just create a new message here. Say called letters ready. And this is just to ensure that the keyboard is formed before anything else happens. And in the letters sprite, instead of this, instead of you know when flag clicked, I'm just going to say when I receive. Uh, so when I receive, let's say. So here I was doing differently. So I'm just going to say when I receive, say letters ready. Uh, so when I receive this, then I do all of this. Now notice here I will do everything. I'll create these lines. I'll choose a word, but I will not do this portion because all this portion I want to go inside the, uh, you know, inside the uh, other sprite. So what will happen now if I just run the code right now, I will still choose the word, right? So it's basically chosen a word after these letters have been formed. Now the further processing has to happen elsewhere, right? But before I go there, I'm just going to, you know, re-emphasize that logic remains the same, that basically instead of getting an input from the answer box which is inside this word i'm going to in get an input from these letters right but this part of the code is really going to remain pretty much uh, you know as it is uh, the, the whole conditions are going to remain as they are so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to move some of this into a broadcast right and that will help us later so what i'll do is to just take this entire piece of code and i'll move this in a broadcast let's say uh, you know i'll just I do not have yet this broadcast, but I'll just create this right now. Uh, let's say just call it correct answer, right? Because, you know, we uh, remember that the, the uh, uh, you know, all the text processing has to happen from this block, this sprite only, but the decision that this, we got a right answer or wrong answer comes from somewhere else, right? Uh, so if I get a right answer, I will do this. And anyway, brought a wrong answer, I don't have to do anything because that wrong answer is already taken care in the hangman, right? So now having done this, I'm just going to go to my this sprite over here and uh, now notice that these clones have been created and all the code of data entry has to happen from within the clones and in fact the logic is quite similar to what was happening earlier uh, you know from these letters which is that every time until the game is over right I keep doing this so I'm just going to say repeat until the game is over notice I'm inside when I start as a clone so I'll say repeat until 
uh, say game over is equal to one, right? So this part doesn't change. Uh, say there you go. So game over equals to sorry, game equals equals to one. Now what I want to make sure is that this key is clicked once and only once, right? So how can I make sure of that? So well, I can use a wait until block two of them back to back like we did in the knife game. So I can say uh, say wait until okay so it's very slow so two wait until's and the conditions i'm going to put is an and condition and this is familiar to us right wait until mouse down and clicking so mouse down which means you know uh, mouse has been clicked and touching mouse pointer right and the second one i'm just going to put a duplicate of this because all i want to do is that every time i click the you know the button i get exactly one letter coming out right so i do this so this Kind of helps me to uh, you know make sure that only one click is registered otherwise i get multiple clicks have uh, you done this before and what i will do is that now i'll create a variable i may already have this here called uh okay let me see if i have that variable now so i'll just create a variable here called let's say make a variable called entered letter entered uh, letter now the idea is the entered letter is going to take place of the answer earlier so i'm going to say set entered letter to and how, what do I set it to? Uh, remember, I can make use of costume names because the letter costumes are basically the uh, you know the letter that we mean to uh, put in, right? So I can say set enter letter to costume name uh, here. I have to be careful, not number, but in fact costume name. And now I can make the same exact case as I was doing earlier. Either the letter is present in the word or it's not present in the word, which means that I can just say in an if else statement if let's say the chosen word contains the entered letter right so i can go and put an operator here if chosen word contains the uh, you know these variables here so i say chosen word contains let's say um, entered letter so now if this happens it means that i've answered it correctly uh, my my answer is uh, correct so what i can do is that i can broadcast correct answer and wait remember i created this uh, other broadcast which is to Take care of the situation where I've answered correctly. So I can say broadcast correct answer and wait. So it will take basically it will uh, you know check the occurrences of the letter, display the letter, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, if I do not have this condition, which means I'm in the else else condition, nothing changes. I just have to intimate the hangman that look a wrong answer has been given. So I can just just say broadcast wrong answer and wait. All right, so let's see this working first. Uh, in fact, we have to still fix a mistake, but let's just see this working. So let's say I click, you know, uh, so, you know, in this case, the chosen word is say stony. I already know that. So let me just say, I try to put, let's say some other letter, for example, K. Notice the entered letter is K and I got this beep and a hangman forming up. Let's say I try enter V, hangman's forming. But now let's say I go and click an S, right? Notice nothing happens, although the entered letter has been seen. And that's because we just have to modify our broadcast here. Because remember now, instead of finding occurrences of answer or displaying answer or updating answer, I have to use the word entered letter, right? So I can, I mean, use the variable entered letter. So find occurrence of entered letter, display letter, entered letter, and update answer for entered letter right so if i did this now i believe this should be working so the word here is let's say impel so i'll try i and in beat i get an i right so i try an m i get an m i try a p i get a p and so on and so forth right now so notice that our keyboard has started to work now only thing that i'm going to do now is that i will in fact add a very useful feature here that i will whenever this keyboard is Key is clicked. I'm going to change its color, right? And how can I can do that by changing the color effect? Because this has a beautiful impact that the user can then keep track of which letters have been uh, used before, right? So I'm going to say, uh, you know, when uh, basically whenever this letter is clicked here, I'm going to say change say color effect by uh, let's say uh, say say 50, right? However, this has a problem also because let's say for example now uh, so the word is let's say kabob. Let's just try. A. I'll put an A. Let's say I go and click A again. Notice the color changes once again. Or I can try even for a, another letter, right? So if it's, let's say, go J. If I go and click J again, the color changes. It gets confusing. To avoid this, right, what I can do is that I can just clear all graphic effects before I change the color, right? So what will happen then is that the color will change once and only once. And now this has become really useful because now the user has an idea of which letters uh, he or she has tried before, right? So for example, notice G, uh, you know, I'll say U. 
I, uh, let's say I try M, and this is quite helpful because now the keyboard is now color coded and user has an idea. Although I want to point out that just to you know give the user an idea of previous letters printed, I don't have to create a virtual keyboard. I can in fact uh, do it from our earlier game itself. So like I said, you don't have to create a virtual input keyboard to you know give user an idea of what's going on in the game. In fact, now I've just gone back to my previous game where I have you know essentially replaced in the same you know in, in this letter sprite i have gone back and uh, updated my correct answer to give me uh, you know to respond to answer and i've broadcast from here so exactly like earlier so notice what i'm doing is that whenever i do not get a right answer right so let's say here i do not get a right answer say the word is whatever you know so let's just give one more word uh what is let's say cynic and i let's say answer a k notice this k gets displayed here right try right? answering an l l gets displayed here right so this way also you can do here what i've done is that whenever i go to the wrong answer i go and write that particular answer to this uh, this position right and of course i'm keeping track with the x and y of where this has been written so that they appear nicely right so uh the point i'm making is that virtual keyboard is great virtual keyboard makes it much easier uh, because you can just change the color of the display but it's not essential that you must have virtual keyboard to uh, you know to get these letters displays right so i hope this was useful take care thank you so much bye bye